Okay. We've been studying about the Apostle Paul and his ministry, and uh, he's been, at least the last couple years of his life, that we know of in prison. We've, the Bible kind of leaves it hanging, and we don't know for sure how long he lived. Um, but we know that he spent time in prison, um, and he wrote letters while he was in prison to the different churches and to people. Um, today we're going to talk about three people that he wrote letters to. The first was Timothy. And in the, his second letter that we have that he wrote to Timothy, um, he reminded Timothy that he had been taught the Bible um, by his mother and his grandmother. And uh, I find it interesting that these two ladies have been known for 2,000 years because they taught a little kid about Jesus. And about the Bible. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and he taught them, uh, uh, Paul told Timothy, he was pretty sure that he was going to be executed. This was probably when Nero was the emperor. And he didn't like Christians, so he had a habit of executing them. Uh, his uh, letter encouraged Timothy to preach the word. Timothy was at one time the pastor at the church of Ephesus and to live in the Word, and um, to use the Bible correctly. And he explained that the, the entire Bible is God-breathed, or God kind of dictated it to the people who had the pen in hand. He told them what to write down. And so we can trust the Bible because it is God's message to us. Um, then he wrote a letter to a young man named... Titus, and Titus was also um, the pastor of a church, the church in Crete, the island south of uh, Greece, and um, Cretans had a really bad reputation for being liars and downright immoral people, and Paul told, was telling Titus, uh, teach them how to live a good Christian life, a life that will make God happy instead of a God uh, life that they think will make them happy. Because though we think what we think will make us happy, God knows what will make us happy. So if we make God happy, he makes sure we're happy. It's kind of a circular thing. Um, want to have if, we, if we live for God, he'll take care of us. Um, he told Titus to teach to put godly elders in front of the church, and that older men are to teach the younger men, and older women teach the younger women how to serve God and live the way God wants them to live. And he told Titus how to deal with people who caused problems in the church and caused divisions. Then he wrote a letter to his friend Philemon. And Philemon uh, lived in Coloss, and uh, he had a runaway slave. And when that slave ran away, he ended up at Paul's house in Rome. Now, I'm not real sure if he was looking for Paul or if God just directed him there, exactly how he ended up there. But he ended up at Paul's house, and Paul led him to the Lord. So the slave became a Christian. Now, as a Roman, uh, Philemon could have had his slave severely punished, possibly even executed for running away. Paul sent this letter to Philemon and said, you know what, Onesimus, he is now a brother in the Lord, and you should accept him back and forgive him. And he strongly hinted that uh, Philemon should set Onesimus free, give him his freedom, and, and um, certainly he shouldn't punish him, and he should treat him like a brother. And uh, it's a really short letter, but it's a cool letter that Paul was taking care of this um, other person who came to uh, came to the Lord through his ministry. Okay, let's sing a song. Running over, running over, my cup is full and running over. Since the Lord saved me, I mess my cup is full and running over, running over, running over. My cup 
My cup is full and 